what number or percentage of transactions on the Snow Jam network are private based on user behavior? Or let me break that into a couple of questions. Does it require users to opt into privacy to have a shielded transaction on your network? No, they don't need to have uh, uh, private transactions. And I made some kind of test on Twitter and 100% users using uh, public IP, uh, public uh, addresses. So they probably don't know what the privacy address is. And that's still the problem about the education. So at the end, uh, when you uh, bring some product and you primary using public addresses, then people will use it. You just, just need to let them know how to use the, the private address. And it's pretty hard to tell them how does it work. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, still we have some kind of issues with the users because, uh, for example, for the master nodes, you need to shield the coins first. So they are not, or, or if you are minor and sending small transactions to, to the uh, address, then you have still the problem when you text a oh, uh, trans transaction. So that's some, some kind of uh, information that we need to bring to users. And uh, yeah, we will try in upcoming months to, to, to yeah, tell them what is it and yeah, how to solve that in easy way, in easy steps. Okay, got it. But so, it sounds like though gen transactions on Snowgem are are not shielded by default. Users would need to do that themselves. And it sounds like based on what you said, most users just either don't know how or just are choosing not to through either just preference or, or maybe ignorance. Uh, the transaction from uh, master node, the generated, generated coin need to be shielded before using and some uh, Master node owner don't know about it, and we need to know. We, we need to talk them to create a private transaction app or a private address, then seal it, seal coin from uh, seal new coin to that private address to use. That's where I'd say like ninety nine point nine percent of the transact private transactions come from. When you the, the master node rewards, those have to be shielded first, and then that's where the the private transaction comes. And he was saying the uh, say you uh, have a hundred coins that were uh, generated from your master node. If you need to withdraw it, it'll show in the address, but you can't just send it from that address to another. You have to that shield it, then take it out from the uh, shielded um, transaction into a public address. And I go from there, but that's it's not really being used. It's we're building the infrastructure for you know a year, two, three down the line. Everybody sees that privacy is going to have to be focused on in, in the next coming years, and it's 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 just going to be in the right place at the right time, and just you know continue to make sure privacy is the prime um, you know motive for essentially just the privacy project, you know, so of Snow Gem, so. It's definitely going to be great to be uh, in privacy right now, especially when everybody's talking about it more recently. It's great, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It is It is kind of the topic du jour. Like uh, it's the hot, hot button topic for a lot of people in, in crypto because of all the stuff with like Paxos, for example, um, sending nasty grams to their users when they use CoinJoin on their, on their Bitcoin. Um, so it's, yeah, it's definitely more popular right now, but uh, just curious because your project builds on technology that, that is cryptographically supposed to be very secure in terms of privacy. Uh, but based on what you're telling me, it sounds like the majority of users are not opting into shielded transactions. However, for masternode rewards on Snowgem, this is part of uh, this is part of what you teach them and part of what's required to it's required. That's awesome. That's that's amazing. So in, it's and that's one way in which contributors to your project generate uh, revenue or generate value as opposed to just mining, they can have a master node and they're required then to use privacy. Yes. Yeah. Also, also, there is another aspect uh, regarding private, private transactions. We also advocated the users when building the master node collateral to send it from a shielded address uh, in a single uh, transaction with the whole 10,000 snow gems. Uh, this is all... Uh, this is because uh, of privacy reasons, uh, so that uh, someone who wants to track it, uh, it won't be able, but also because of the change. 
uh, as you all know, the the unspent change it goes back to a change address and uh, and so on. Uh, from privacy address, the change goes back to the same uh, privacy address, so it's much easier and much user friendly. In Asgard, we have some kind of one-click setup, and in the first step, you need to create the the Z address, uh, the private address, and send transaction to Asgard to verify you are the owner of this address, and then you can go on. So, yeah, that's something what we also implemented. And the last thing is that we are debating or talking about the light wallet which we will release in upcoming weeks and we will be probably able to uh, start with private transactions and then as an option to have the, the public but still we are talking about it if it's possible or not very cool yeah as i understand it most light wallets and mobile wallets for coins that that uh, that leverage zk snark technology apparently it's it's been a very difficult challenge for a lot of teams yeah. So yeah, if you focus on that, that's amazing. Let's talk a little bit more on, on this thread of privacy. And, and again, mentioned from the beginning, this is going to be one of the big topics for the, for the interview. Um, as far as the privacy mechanism that's used by Snowgem, was it acquired by, by uh, forking ZK Snark implementation from Z, uh, Zcash or was it any other project that you got that implementation from? For the code from Zcash. Then we uh, add master node to uh, to to the original code and let it work. Then we uh, implement some more features to our coins and what the game is currently. You got the zk snark implementation directly from Zcash, and during yes. the sapling update, then were you yes. were able to pull changes? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so you're you're as secure as Zcash is yes. post sapling. Yeah, I mean, yep. just for the record, I know this is ancient history in in crypto in crypto time, um, the sapling update. But just ask because that was was that was nasty, wicked. Um, the the bug that they caught. Um, as far as the uh, the data cost for a shielded transaction and the settlement time, does it wind up requiring a significant amount more data or time? to send a shielded transaction on Snowjam. No, it's exactly like the cash is. It's just about about two or three seconds. So normal transaction as from public to public. It sounds like then on your network, privacy has not been the, the central focus then uh, from earlier on in terms of educating the users on the fact that ZK snarks are there. It's been a feature, uh, but it sounds like based on user behavior, it's just not being used very much yet. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, oh, not know. much of a need, I guess you could say at sure. this present time. Sure. Sure. It makes sense. It's like transactions per second. It's one of those features that I yeah. think for a lot of coin projects that are based on ZK snarks, they, um, you know, it's like, okay, well, do we have to go there yet? But now we're seeing chain, uh, chain, uh, chain analysis and other similar companies do chain analytics and then de-anonymize some networks and start to assign wallet addresses and transaction IDs to specific users. So I guess that's why it's hitting everybody's radar now. So I don't think anybody likes uh, to have a pseudonymous network then be like, oh, nope, it's not even pseudonymous. Like it's, it's not anonymous, it's not pseudonymous, it's they know who you are. Um, I think that's scaring a lot, of, a lot of users of a lot of different coins. So as far as privacy oriented functions outside of transactions via shielded transactions, is there any other privacy-oriented feature of the Snowgem project or ecosystem? What do you think about black box? But Dax, want to talk a little maybe on that or no? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's a top secret project, still the top secret project. But yeah, what I can publicly say is that we are developing, yeah, it's called black box, is um, hardware, masternode, miner for home users and um, it will also run content node directly on it so at the end you will be able to store uh, your private data on decentralized network but totally private as we talked earlier you need a private key for that and you will have some kind of proof that it's stored uh, on on your hardware and also on the on the black box network 
So you will not send the data to internet, but directly to this black box. And this black box will distribute, distribute it to other nodes, but uh, decrypt it with your key. So only you can see it with your key. That's big. Okay, so you're, you're talking about creating an actual appliance then. So in, a, in addition to the ecosystem, you want a hardware appliance. Yeah, it's, it will be hardware appliance and yeah, you will be running masternode. So you will receive the, the, the rewards from the masternode, which is uh, it, now it's around 45% per year, the, the reward, the, the return of the investment per year. And then yeah. you, will, you will have the content node. You will be able to choose uh, how many storage or how, how 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 big the storage will be? For example, one terabyte or two terabytes, like when you are going to buy Synology or QNAP. So it will be some kind of similar machine, but connected to decentralized network, totally private, totally anonymous, and secured by by the keys. That's awesome. <laughs> and okay. I yeah, I mean, we're we're a few weeks out from publication of this of this interview, so it may well be possibly that that there will be a public announcement about this in in the interim. Yeah, I, uh, I had uh, two or three sneak peeks. Uh, we have actually two black boxes, and on one black box, uh, we are testing Masternode, and now it's running for three or four months constantly without any interruption. And um, yeah, when we will say it's stable, uh, we will publicly announce it, and there will be probably some kind of pre-sale of these black boxes, because uh, all the chassis uh, is already prepared. We have uh, yeah, all the data sheets already um, in in deployment. So what we will just need to do is to integrate it with with the wallet, because you will be also able to set up it via wallet. Because, uh, yeah, as we talk about the uh, uh, setup for the users, you need to have it as simple as as much you can. Yeah, so only plug and play. So that's something we need to work on, and and then we can go on. Uh, at this moment, the priority is uh, on the light wallet and credit cards. But after that, yeah, that's the something what we want to release together with the content nodes. Very, very cool. And so as of today, then it sounds like you're not sure what the release possible release schedule could be for this then. I think it's it's Q4, yeah. So okay. I think it's it's October, November, something like that. Oh, man, now I'm excited. Remember when you guys make it big. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, the more focus right now, though, is obviously on the, the light wallet and the credit cards. That's obviously the go-to. It's more of a, the black box, personally, why I I think I, I want to pre-order one right now is not having to rely on say like Apple's third party storage. And if you lose your phone and they, you're putting your trust into a third party holding all of your media, it's not, it's not good. I've had a lot of people, my, uh, my fiance just lost voicemails and it's, it's crazy when you're putting your trust into these third parties. And I just look at it as a branch, like, you know, my media is my media. I'm not big into social media. I'm forced to just due to the, the whole atmosphere with the world we live in, but you know, it's, it's going to be a, a good option, but that's seems like, you know, it's going to be down the line. The light wallet credit cards is like, it's the, I have credit cards and crypto. It's a, it, I don't know how it hasn't been more mainstream. It's just really the regulations and uh, all the, all that law jargon and everything involved. It's, but we're going to get through it. Crypto is going to get through it. It's just, you know, we'll have the most, a card that's differential from everybody else that has more layers than just a payment processor. That's exciting, guys. I'm I'm definitely excited to hear that. And um and yeah, knowing that you have that as a as a privacy oriented ecosystem, part of a privacy oriented ecosystem, is pretty darn cool. And it seems like it's most meaningful in terms of the way that users interact with technology and hope for privacy. Um, it sounds like that's going to be something that doesn't require a whole lot of onboarding or education for people to just intuitively figure out. Like, okay, I put. I put data inside of this black box and this network and it stays private. That's really cool. Yeah. It'll be as simple as the banking system currently. It's just digital funds. There's a bunch of stuff going underneath the hood that nobody really knows, but we'll make it easy and you'll know how to use it. You know, it's Yeah, similar. and the, the motto will be your keys, your naked pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hey, Jennifer Lawrence trusted in iCloud. Look where that got her, right? I mean, it's, yeah, it's not too soon. Not to, I can say that now. All right. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care about your 
about your naked pictures, but clear, Snow Gem does. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. As far as the uh, support on third-party wallets, is Snow Gem supported today on third-party wallets? Yeah, many. I want to say off the top of my head, I think the last time that I popped open Zellcore, I saw Snow Gem yes. there. Are there any other notable wallets that I just maybe maybe people who are tuning in haven't tried or haven't heard of before? One of them is the Google wallet. That's the fork of Snow Gem. We are integrated also in some kind of web wallets. Then we are also listed on a few exchanges. Uh, in very soon uh, period, we will release uh, probably two new exchanges. And then we have or we will have own exchange. And uh, at the end, there is also some mobile wallets with Snow Gem already, like Polispay. So we are already integrated to Polispay. They are also trying to uh, bring uh, credit cards. They already delivered. And um, yeah, we can publicly announce that we will try to cooperate with them because we have some kind of product that they want and they have also something that we want. So we are connected uh, at this moment and trying to cooperate. Very, very cool. Do any of the third-party wallets that uh, support Snow Gem today support shielded transactions? I don't think uh, there is uh, anything, anyone. Have to do you work with the native wallet then to, to use yes. shielded transactions? Yes. That's good for anybody who's maybe not familiar with Snow Gem to know. I think it's rare for most ZK Snark coins to, uh, to, be, to offer shielded transactions on a third party wallet. Um, as, as it is today. Apparently it's a little more difficult. It's a technical today. problem, yeah. As far as there being good mobile wallet support today, I mean, I'm sure you guys are aware there are a lot of developing nations throughout the world in which users of technology, their first and very likely into the future, their only window to digital technology will be a mobile phone. Is your coin supported on many mobile wallets today? Or do you have a native mobile client? We have own mobile wallet, then we will release the coin guard which will be the, the leadership and uh, yeah, we will try to uh, bring more coins into the coin guard. So probably when we will do that, then uh, a lot of users will come to our solution and they will use only our wallet in the, in the future. Because why to have uh, one wallet without functions when you can have a Swiss knife, our business Swiss knife, uh, and to use uh, all the currencies, you can connect credit card, you can create master nodes with it. So yeah, that's that's the key point and that's the future of Snow Gym mobile wallet. With CoinGuard on the roadmap, are you planning to support shielded transactions within CoinGuard? Yes, sure. The, the timeline to having a release candidate for CoinGuard that supports shielded transactions do you have a timeline already set now or, or a rough idea of when that can be worked on? Well, we had a little pause because TXID celebrated uh, a Lunar New Year a few days ago. Yeah. So uh, we postponed the development a bit, but yeah, we are starting hard from the next week. And because we want to release uh, the credit cards and other stuff in the March, then we will probably have uh, the beta, public beta in uh, in February. Wow. Okay. So th yeah. this is imminent. I mean, if this is yeah. not a, a distant roadmap item then. No, no, no. We need to release it because of the credit card. So we need to do it as soon as possible. Uh, we need to finish it because we already have working version for us. Then, yeah, I need to make some design for that and some UI. And uh, the backend is almost finished. I think it's 70 or 80%. So uh, it's only a few hours of work and we can go online. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is really exciting. <laughs> yeah. You guys have, you guys, I mean, you really do have a lot of announcements um, that I, I, a lot of this is really taking me off guard. I, I thought that it was, there was going to be at least in yeah, a couple we, of categories, there wouldn't be like so many big announcements. It'd be like, oh yeah, we, and this we, is kind of you know moving along and, but the, I mean, yeah, you guys we, have got we like were, something big in every category. Sure, we were very, very silent during bear market because it was nonsense to to create something new uh, because not so much users will use it. So we developed a whole year, 2019. And now 
we are finishing in this year. So all the stuff we worked in 2018 will come this year. Future privacy plans. You mentioned the potentially the black box. Is there anything anything that we haven't talked about so far related to privacy of uh, of user transactions, user data, or uh, or just user experience that uh, that's on the roadmap? Schmucks, do you want to talk? No, I don't think. I think we covered them all. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, we touched all the points. Hey, I was just asking to be thorough, guys. I wasn't sure. I mean, based on everything else we've talked about, you're like, oh, yeah, there's this thing. Oh, right. There's one more. <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to think of uh, <laughs> there was something else. But uh, yeah, the only thing that was a little bit out there was the black boxes. But you know, focusing on, on the credit cards is, is the m- most important. So, well, But so many other things are involved, and it's just a build, well, it, build in progress. What I can say is that we will probably release more things than Bitcoin Satoshi Vision this year. That's it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, they're great to hear. Privacy opinions, guys. Let's just uh, let's let's uh, close down the interview with a, a few of your opinions on privacies. If you could indulge me, and this can be any kind of private currency or or private mode of transaction. What are your personal favorite top three types of private currency? It can be. An implicit agreement between two people, favors or barter. It can be cash. It can be some other kind of bearer instrument that a person just carries with them. Um, no wrong answers. I won't judge you if you say something that is not popular in, in crypto circles. But what are your top three favorite ways to transact privately? I don't know if we are talking strictly to crypto or no, anything. Any any anything. private way of transacting with other people. What are your top three favorites? I broke smokes. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I broke him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I never focused too much on this. I like the idea, and I am sure we will need it sooner or later. But I'm not so, so focused, so desperate on this. That's why I probably don't know what to answer. It. The question is what what means to be private? Yeah, because yeah, if you want to transfer funds for, uh, over PayPal, then maybe it's private, but only for you in your brain. But technically, it's <laughs> totally transparent, and everybody knows about the transaction. So I think it's pretty hard to to say what is private transaction and and, and name free. Yeah. So okay, I don't okay. know. To... I, I I have an answer. <laughs> uh, if I have to to make a deal with someone. We speak on the phone and we arrange a, a place where me, uh, I will let something there and he will find it there and replace it with the uh, agreed deal, let's say. So you don't have to meet the person, but you have to settle a place where to make the change. Of course, it's risky because you can find your stuff and don't let. <laughs> but you can supervise it. I don't know. Okay, so it sounds like then Something like for it. Smokes, yeah, you, really but... like, you really like using a drop point then. Yeah. Okay, so for whatever it I is. Also, I also remember one thing uh, because uh, we yeah. integrated to our Discord, which is a yeah, chatting platform. We integrated PandaBot and there is a escrow option, which means that it will create temporary address. Uh, you will send uh, as a sender uh, first part of money. Uh, receiver will send also uh, his part of money. And then if the transaction is correct, then both of you will receive the the equivalent. Like if you want to buy Snow Jam with Bitcoin, then first sender will set, send Bitcoin, second will send the Snow Jam. And if, if uh, the transaction match, matches, then uh, the bot will transfer it to you. It, this is... Uh, as much more private as yeah, I can see is... right now. Nice. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, I was talking about a, a real world example. Yeah, in the real world, nothing is private, yeah. I think. Definitely, if you live in an area where there's a heavy surveillance state, for sure. It's it's difficult yeah. to get away from observation and surveillance. But uh, if, if you are going to ATM, then you have your face on the bank machine. So yeah, there is no more private anymore. No, I mean, in, in a way, in a way, that's that, that's possibly true. But the person you transact with may may not have a camera on them, unless you really like talking to, like, buying stuff from police officers with little body cams. I, I don't know anybody else who wears a body cam every day. 
So maybe with uh, with the United States, with all the legalization of uh, marijuana going through, you got, you know, you're not going to want to do that publicly to a certain extent, you know, but cash still comes into play. It's usually the question. It's pretty much just cash. Anything you do in cash is probably better off doing it on a card since it's tra- uh, traceable, trackable. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So it sounds like then for dark unknown cash is top of your list. Is there anything <laughs> yeah. else that came to mind? Um, the whole barter system, I guess. Maybe that'll start taking off again. <laughs> but um, you know, you're changing your goods for services, just stuff that you could do. But that's just cash. Is it all circles back to cash? Hopefully, okay. hopefully, crypto will be that whole barter aspect that'll be more used more thoroughly. But only time will tell. Okay, got it. And then TXID. Do you have a favorite a favorite form of private currency? Um, you must say Snow Jim. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that that point one percent of of uh user transactions yeah. it's all t x i of course no gap and uh zcash yeah because uh, it's uh based on zcash we created snow jam so i must like zcash first <laughs> i will call it zcash we all like our father <laughs> <laughs> yeah right how can you say you don't like zcash when you use zk snarks for sure and then ingvar are you still on the call i uh, i muted you before because there's some typing. Yeah, I'm still here. Awesome. Do you yeah. have a, a, a favorite private form of transacting? So private, favorite private currency? Yeah, the first thing that, of course, came to mind was just basically handing somebody a piece of paper. That's money, basically. It's for fiat. But my favorite part of the day, basically, is when I get home from work and I press the shield all button so I can see uh, what my master notes have created for me during the day. So that may be my... <laughs> I would call that my favorite private transaction. Guys, holy smokes. This is, it's blown me away because I was not familiar with that aspect of the, uh, the snow gem ecosystem that the rewards are shielded. That's a pretty big deal for anybody, especially for somebody who may be a larger stakeholder, right? Maybe has a few dozen or a couple hundred masternodes. I don't think that they would want to broadcast to everybody what their net worth is in your coin. That's awesome. Yeah question that i have for everybody and clearly ingvar he answered uh, he answered by giving an example have you used the private currencies that you mentioned before i mean takes idea of you use zcash in practical application with shielded transactions before i use private transaction before uh, when i send coin for to my friend then uh, but uh, almost i use uh, public transaction for zcash that doesn't sound too weird to me. I mean, when you say that you don't use a whole lot of the shielded transactions on Zcash, I, I think you and Z- Zuko, Wilcox, both don't use many shielded transactions. So it's, yeah, user behavior is just just the way it is um, based on preference. Uh, but Dark Unknown, you mentioned cash also, and then obviously you've used cash in the real world. Um, and then you mentioned a specific industry. I'm just curious. <laughs> the, is is this a uh, is this where your practical application comes from? Are there like, uh, where would you say is the the place that you choose to use cash most because you want privacy? Um, I, I would use it more along the lines of just not having like a banker, you know, just say like the cops being able to trace it, just using the cards, just the, the it's it all like just. I don't even know, like just going to a bar. I, it's it's uh, pretty much every example I could think of that I, w- I would want, I would prefer to use cash over card. But if I could use crypto over cash, you know, it's it's all correlates back to that. And, and, and I'm really, I want to be able to use instead of cash, use my crypto for my day-to-day private transactions that I, that I see fit, you know, especially if, uh, you know, a c- country's dollar is hyperinflated that month. So, you know, you never know. But um, but I, I just think that the cash aspect is the um, just the go-to now for all the privacy to a certain extent. I don't know what other has anybody ever answered that other than cash or other than what other examples do you have? Like, what, oh. it's it's a tricky question. Yeah, you're I mean, asking. It, it sounds like a tricky question, but I mean, the, the reason that I ask everybody what their interpretation of the best private currency is for them is because. Everybody's got a unique, a unique answer. I like Ingvar mentioning that uh, that he's his favorite private transactions are when he gets masternode rewards. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, I haven't heard that before. Totally novel. But I've heard uh, I've heard responses uh, as diverse, and you'll appreciate this because you're familiar with American currency. Uh, but I've heard pre 1964 silver dimes. 
because our currency here, our fiat currency here, uh, before 1964, our, uh, our 10 cent pieces here in the United States were made with real silver. They don't make them with real silver anymore because economically it makes no sense anymore, but the value of silver went up at that point. And so the, the US treasury, the mint for, uh, for creating 10 cent pieces, they realized we have to change the composition and so the, uh, the, the metallurgic breakdown of U.S. dimes has totally changed. But before 1965, 1964, I think 1960 through 1964, there's enough silver. It's nearly 30% by weight that they've got significant value and they're small to carry around. That is a good example. Yeah, right? that's, that's yeah, a decent said, example. I really want that. That's, that's good uh -huh. private currency for me because it's not just that it's something you can transact yeah. in person, but for those who know and they read it and they say, oh, 1961, mm. <laughs> I, I get it. That's worth more than 10 cents. So there's also uh, a bit of knowledge that that person has to have. So that, that one kind of took me off guard, but I've heard all kinds of things. Yeah. Guys, thanks for playing that game. That one's that one's fun for me. Favorite privacy tech. What's something that you guys think? And individually, maybe you can come up with something that's a little bit different. And again, I've heard a, a variety of responses on this. It can be something like a VPN or Tor, maybe I2P as a technology. Um, is there some sort of privacy tech that you think more consumers should be aware of and use, but especially people in the cryptocurrency space should be aware of and use? Hardware wallets, 100%. 100%. That's the main one. Great. That's right, but hey, I'm on, I'm on. They are all from across the world. Okay. You want to say hello? Come say hello. Here, bud. Hi. <laughs> yeah, you can't see Ingvar, but he's in Iceland. Isn't that crazy? What? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm actually in Denmark, though, so it doesn't really. Oh, he lied. He's in Denmark. He's from yeah. Iceland. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. Stop. Stop. <laughs> doesn't count. We are not aliens. We can speak English. <laughs> Just not yeah. only. <laughs> yeah, stop. He's trying to play the finger hole game with you guys. We don't actually live in Iklus like a lot of people from America think. Actually. Oh, geez. Well, you know, I, yeah. Here's the thing. They're generally, I, hopefully you're getting a better experience of Americans when you deal with people who are in the cryptocurrency scene. Yeah, I really do. Good. <laughs> They've had to put up with me so far. I'm probably the... Uh, <laughs> You know, the New Yorker, the most outspoken American, but you know, I, I hold my tongue sometimes, so it's good. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm I'm gonna, you know why they, you know, why they called Iceland Iceland, right? And Greenland Greenland. To what do you confuse, mean? I know it's all oh, to confuse what me or Americans? Americans, so that in general, that, yeah. so that if we want to go, we'll go to Greenland because it sounds like it's very pleasant. And when we get there, it's really not that pleasant. Well, ben and we'll was, stay away from Iceland because it sounds like it's not very pleasant, but it's actually really very pleasant beautiful I went there two years ago proposed to my now fiance and it's uh you know great it was a great trip my favorite trip most memorable i can remember 100 percent. not oh just due to the proposal but you know the environment is beautiful beautiful so, land so you're stealing their natural resources you're stealing their women oh my gosh okay. <laughs> no, no, no 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 it took vacation over there oh, okay i was there i didn't meet there over there now yeah, I was gonna say ingvar is uh, he's uh, starting to turn red like he's took our women <laughs> 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 and used to be our job in, uh, back in the days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Do you, do you uh, know they killing whales? Yeah, the good old days. People people living in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. So guys, yeah, your favorite privacy tech, Dark Unknown mentioned, hardware wallets. And that's great. Can I just follow up really briefly on that one? Is there a hardware wallet that supports Snowgem today? Yeah, we integrated Ledger, but... Because of lazy Americans, they didn't uh, merge our code uh, already. So we are waiting for update. And then because Trezor hardware wallet is uh, from Czech Republic, and I'm from Czech Republic, then we are working on Trezor wallet at this moment. Yeah, Ledger is, is French, actually. They're not American. Really? Yes. Burn. <laughs> but, I mean... Yeah, but French are more lazier than Americans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I've worked on a French company. Yeah, me. maybe they're uh, they're definitely more opinionated for sure. If that's possible, the French can do it. So, but maybe, but, but but they have probably uh, developers from America because I'm talking only with American guys. Weird. Well, sorry about that. So it sounds like though the commitment is supposedly there though. Well, you'll get there. Yeah, sure. Okay. Everything is finished. We are just waiting for update. That's it. 
the incumbent platforms though, then you should be on yeah. soon. All yeah. of them. That's great. Okay, so hardware wallets then and today sounds like you you endorse Trezor because they're on their game. Yeah. That's great. Who else here has a favorite privacy tech? And what what is your favorite privacy tech? No wrong answers, guys. Just what just what you think people should know and use. Primary, they need to use own brain <laughs> and to not uh, answer, for example, uh, to some foreigners. We have very, very bad experience with, for example, Discord again, because you can buy some kind of uh, Nitro, which is uh, some improvement of, on Discord, and you can fake your nickname. Then somebody is trying to impersonate us uh, all the time from the beginning. Uh, and yeah, a lot of people um, lost his coins because they they engage them and uh, ask them for some kind of update or support and via any desk or team viewer they stole uh, their money. So this is something what users needs to be aware. Okay, all right. So just just uh, in- increase your skepticism of anybody that uh, that poses to be a member of the team. Yes, yeah, scammers are everywhere. Okay, awesome. Yeah, by the way, I think we uh, we are the most scammed project at this moment. And um, we had uh, Jet McCaleb uh, impersonator and he had Skype with me and use it uh, uh, AI for that. So it was somebody else, but the face was uh, from the chat, chip McCallum. So it was really, really weird. Wow. What well, I mean, yeah. they must have thought it would really pay off. They they went through a lot of effort. Were they, they probably got a lot of people too? So yeah. Yeah, just he was crazy. offering twenty million stellar lumens for something. <laughs> okay, interesting. All right. Well, yeah. Good. Good feedback. Good advice there in general, guys. Any any other privacy tech you think is uh, is relevant for for users to try? Can be can be anything. Obviously, skepticism is good. Hardware wallets we know in the crypto space is helpful for people who are within the crypto. But the average consumer, what should they do to improve their privacy? What do you think, Schmokes? You need to read more to be more informed. Know the difference between a, a Nigerian prince scam and a Ponzi. I agree. Be educated. TXID, you had something. To secure your money. Especially for the coin, you should uh, encrypt the wallet to uh, with uh, with the password and uh, use it in a virtual machine. It will decrease the chance to uh, for hacker to store the coin. I use own my money in virtual machine. You can create virtual machine on your Windows, by, um, for example, with VMware, yeah. and you you will install system like Windows 10 over that. Then install any kind of wallet over there and store coins over there because it's really, really hard for hacker to encrypt your files or or um, uh, steal it because it's for example ten or fifteen gigabytes of data and it's almost impossible to to decrypt it. So for for the if you want to use it every day, then this is the most secure way. If you don't have a hardware wallet, awesome. And then uh, Ingvar, anything anything else you want to add as far as privacy tech? The simplest the privacy tech for anybody to use basically is just to use a VPN. It's not that the highest tech, but if you want to add a little bit of privacy to anything you do, good VPN service is always nice. It's great advice. And uh, and TXID, thank you again for encrypting your wallet and using a virtual machine. That's great advice. As far as guys, I'm going to ask you one closed-ended question. This will be the first and only closed-ended question that I've asked you. Uh, so far in the the interview, but does privacy matter? Sure. Of course. What would a complete lack of privacy look like if there were no privacy in the world or we fail to implement privacy correctly? If you know a lot of information about your neighbor, then it's bad. Hey, I don't know that much about him. I already don't like him. Blackmail. For sure. There are a lot of people who don't even have particularly dark secrets, but Maybe just things they, they simply don't want others to know. True. Let's look on the bright side, though. If we as a society or people in general are able to achieve the correct level of privacy and we, we do it right, we implement privacy correctly, what does that look like? What will be the, the, the resolution of, of total privacy? I think 
if you don't know something, then you can't damage somebody, for example. You can't steal the money. You can't, uh, yeah, argue with something, and come and knock on the door and and bring what it, whatever you want. That's the first thing. And uh, second thing, um, well, if you if we look to the ages before the technology, I mean, 20 years back, uh, there was a lot of privacy. There was uh, no internet. There was no mobile phones. So yeah. If you don't want to use the technology, it's pretty hard to to stay private, yeah, for sure. But we can try to to go back 20 years back, but use also the technology. I think that sounds like a really good depiction of what privacy looks like. Any other opinions about what uh, what the correct implementation of privacy looks like if we do it right? It's kind of hard to say what the correct depiction of a privacy is i don't think uh, personal privacy is 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 an, even a feasible idea anymore to be uh, completely private i mean you would have to delete the internet as it is basically and as long as there's money in the picture there's nothing is going to be private until we get something like universal pay everybody gets the same kind of marxism ideas then there's nothing is going to be private totally private i mean so i don't know i don't know what <laughs> to really tell you about that there's not as much privacy as it was you know as Dak said 20 years ago and that's that's the big issue that's just you got to look at okay if that was the case then 20 years from now it's gonna you know it's gonna be much earlier than that then i personally think we need to really focus and hone in on privacy but why should somebody else know you know your finances why should why should it should be private it's your own funds and then you know other people could make you know say facebook or something they jump to conclusions or they make an impression of you before they even like know you or it's just opening it's just all out there it's there has to be private aspects and finances should be key as far as being private with your finances you shouldn't really have a need to know i mean it's it's a bit of a tricky question though because then you have at the other hand you got all like the um you know, the illegal stuff that does go on and then that's what's being honed in on. It's like, okay, crypto, it's all bad, bad, bad. There's only bad things that happen with it. Meanwhile, that's, you know, a fraction of a percent of, of what's actually going on in the network. And it's 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 going to be required. And uh, I just see five or 10 years from now, it's unfortunate. I mean, I'm I'm in America. We we probably don't, don't see it as much, you know, but with China, the, with social credit scores and just the, the invasion of just, it's, you have nowhere to turn it's crazy it's really crazy we have the technology not only for hide the the funds the money but we have also power to hide for example constructions the houses the cars all the vehicles everything so we have the technology for that so why not to use it why somebody needs to to know how many you houses for example you own or how many companies are using so at the end, the government needs to, to pay the taxes. Okay, why not? But why all the information needs to be in public? That's nonsense. Totally agreed. Most people, I mean, some people aren't aware at least that there are fully anonymous uh, corporate structures that are available in several countries throughout the world. And the United States being one of them, you don't even need to be a US citizen to, to form one, right? So very... Yeah, fewer people still know that, that you don't have to be a U.S. citizen to form a fully anonymous company in the United States. Um, so, yeah, to your, to your point, I think a lot of people, just based on user behavior, they're only doing it because they don't know. Yeah. In my view, actually, I might have a bit of a warped view on privacy because uh, coming from Iceland, where everybody knows everything about everybody, basically, because we're so few, uh, a lot of people, I think, out of Iceland don't actually know this, is that once a year, there's actually a magazine that comes out that actually has uh, uh, the monthly weights of like a lot of the sexers. Like, yeah, this guy, is get, he gets paid uh, 1 million Iceland kroners a month. And it basically just it states the wages of like 1,500 people or something. Jeez. So, <laughs> there's not a lot of privacy back home. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. See, I mean... And there are a lot of corporations here, just just a, a single company where it's generally understood to be very poor uh, professional etiquette to discuss what you're paid, even within one company, with with between coworkers, it's considered yeah. poor professional etiquette. 
and I mean, people still do it. <laughs> they still talk about what they're earning. Um, but it's uh, but the human resources department, generally speaking, will discourage that here and say like, hey, don't discuss what you're earning with somebody else because maybe you've gotten a raise and they haven't. And, and they think that they earned a raise. They think they merit some kind of different payment. You know, everybody always thinks, everybody always overvalues what they're, what they're worth, their contribution, it seems at work. Um, so that's, I'm, I'm kind of mind blown that there's a magazine yeah. printed there. Now we went over where users can find your project. I've got to ask the best way for somebody who's new to the project, who wants to contribute, because let's be real, not every social media platform, not every communication platform is the same. What's the best one for you? Discord by far. Discord is the way most active. And we, uh, we have a su suggestions channel there. So we accept all the help we can get, uh, any ideas. There's no bad ideas, really. Well, there are bad ideas, but... Eh, you can just ban those people. Got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Discord it is then. For the public record, did I ask for or receive a bounty in arranging this interview? Yeah, one million coins. Ah, crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I asked for, I think, I'm pretty sure I asked for the equivalent number of master nodes. Get it right. Just hold it. You will get them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are throwing me under the bus here. Uh, <laughs> Just so wait try, for them. <laughs> uh, so I try to broadcast impartiality. I do accept tips. That's different. I, you know, I'm not, not too proud to accept tips. That's great. And I will have a Snow Gem uh, donation address in the show notes as well. But in setting this up, uh, I, I offer these interviews completely free of charge just because I know that with teams like yours, especially when there's so much community contribution, uh, that it's, it's just, it's not fair to go over to teams that are like, hey, yeah, we can afford a $2,000 you know, uh, publicity bounty, and then leave everybody else, uh, everybody else out in the cold. And clearly, you guys are working on technology that is that's pretty awesome and an ecosystem that's that's pretty rich and robust. So, if you if you had an allocated budget, I wouldn't want to miss out on talking to you about it. So, yeah, it's very important to me. Personally, I, I really appreciate you are doing this because, yeah, other other people in the crypto just doing it because of the money, and that's the huge difference. Guys, it was a pleasure again. And I, I, I'm really excited that you had so much to, to get me caught up on and the audience caught up on with the Snow Gem roadmap. This is really exciting times. So Ooh. thank you. And last question, this is, and now I'm dead serious. Can I borrow 50,000 ETH in exchange for my new token, Kex? <laughs> <laughs> huh? uh, no? Send me the uh, address. <laughs> I'll think about it. I didn't say <laughs> Richard Hart makes it look so easy. What am I, I doing know, wrong? I, Gotta work on I my know. pitch. Well, guys, I definitely appreciate you taking the extra time to go through all the different facets of the Snow Jam project right now and the upcoming uh, releases. Um, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, hopefully we'll talk really soon about uh, about the credit card, the wallet, hopefully Lightbox. black box soon later. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, so appreciate your time. It was great. Thank you. Thank you us. so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you.